Hi friend, let's talk about tuples in Swift programming language. What they are, why do we have them and how to use them. But let's run intro. I didn't record any iOS development tutorial for a while and I have a few questions in my tutorial backlog, so this is time to record one of them. If you are a regular visitor of this channel, I have a question to you as well. Firstly, thank you for visiting and building community here. And uh, secondly, let me know what you think about tutorials on this channel. Are you here mainly for vlogs or you would like to see something else? From my perspective, I see tutorials helpful way to answer commonly asked questions. Most of the videos on this channel are based on questions what I received on Instagram. Basically, I'm recording video, <laughs> copying the link in notes and uh, whenever someone else asking the same question to me, I'm sending answer and uh, video to one who is asking. Let me know in the comments what you think about that and uh, feel free to reach me out on Instagram or Twitter to answer directly if you do not like to post in comments. But enough talking, let's jump to the computer and start programming. Ok, but let's jump in the Swift programming language book. There is quite a good paragraph and description. Tuples group multiple values into single compound value. Nice. <laughs> but what does that exactly mean? Let's open Xcode and write some small test project. I would say that tuples are somewhere in the middle between arrays and structs. They are lightweight containers that can be used for different types of values. Let's create example tuple. Let's say so. Let's amount is So this is tuple. We have a variable name and we have two values, string and integer for let's say currency and value. This is very nice and fast way to put together temporary values for which you don't like to create struct for example something to use quite fast and we can use it later for example let currency is amount let's say so and here you will see that our currency is compiling our currency is dollar sign it looks quite similar to RIs if you are using that in this way but for some kind of documentation we can use also names here for example for example we can set tuple like this as well and here we have our tuple player name is Ivers levels 100 and so on and we can access our values now for example let user name is player name so we can we can we can access our values in this way so username currently is ivers and we can set let current level is player and we can use index as well it is not necessary to use this level so basically we have 100 here and if we will change it to level and run it again so we still have 100 here so it works in both ways for sure we can have access to our premium here as well but if you like to assign all of the values from tuple maybe easier will be do in this way and let's say find user 
is player. So you can immediately assign all three values from this tuple. If we will print out all our values, you will see that here is our result, I was 100 true. This looks very, let's say, <laughs> theoretically for me, what are practical use cases. Personally, I am using uh, tuples mostly as return values from functions, and I see that this is commonly used uh, use case. Let's make an example. In one application, I have for in-app items, price is provided as single string and I have currency and amount in this string included. But I need, in the application, I need to split that into different values to show on different labels. So basically how I can do that using tuples. Let's write a function for, for that. Let's write function split price and we have price as string as input to our function and we will return currency as string and we will return amount also string. So, what we will do inside the function, let's say, let components and we will take our price and we will use string function to separate our string and we will use, in my example, I have empty space between, between currency and amount. We can return now. We have to return two elements. So basically we are receiving one string and we have to return two strings, two elements. And what is happening here, we have, we are creating, basically we are creating tuple here. And we are assigning all of the elements from this input price string. So basically we have to be careful. There is no any, let's say, verification in this function. I use quite simple example to show how it could work. But uh, basically we are taking string, splitting it to the parts by looking to the empty space and and assigning all of those parts as tuple values to the our new created tuple named components. So, and we are returning com components first element and components second element. So, our function now should work. Let's try to test it. Let's create test price. And our test price will be, let's use a dollar sign and amount will be, let's say, 999. And let's try to split this somehow. So I'm, I will create new tuple and I will use split price function. One I could be nicer here. So basically I am creating one more tuple and I, uh, I will create this tuple using my function and I will feed one string, this one, test price to my function. So this should work now. Let's do it this way. Let's try. Will it work? 
seems fine here and seems fine here as well. So basically that is our previous printout and here we got our dollar sign as parsed currency and amount here is as parsed price. I'm using in this way tuples quite often. I was asked once in interview about tuples to describe how they work. If you can explain and show this example, you will be 100% answered that question. That is it on our tutorial. Okay, thank you for watching so far. If you like this video, there is like button, uh, subscribe buttons also works very well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you on the next one.